Hey everyone, welcome back. In this video, I'm going to do a full test on the Amp Camp Amp Mini Amplifier by Nelson Pass. And so this is a kit amplifier that retails for 110 US dollars. Uh, you can buy the Essentials Kit, which is another 25 US dollars, and it includes uh, these these specific components to complete the kit. Okay, and so it requires assembly. Uh, this was sent to me by the uh, DIY Audio Store, um, basically as a gift uh, for uh, contributing to the DIY community with my reviews and so I decided that I was going to test uh, this amplifier since for the past couple of months I've been doing electronics testing and so in this video we're going to do a full test and look at harmonic IMD and get lead distortion at various output voltages and so uh, let's look at this in detail so 5 watt output power uh, 2 channel so it includes the 24 volt uh, outboard DC power supply so it has RC input RCA inputs and then you can see the blue terminal screw down uh, terminals there for the speaker outputs now there are adjustment pots to fully um, set up as a one-time setup for the unit after you've uh, assembled the unit then you're uh, there's test points uh, here and also here uh, to confirm that the amplifier is operating within its proper uh, voltage parameters and so that was fairly straightforward to do um, I did that before I had done this review. There's also little jumpers that you can pull out which defeats the uh, negative feedback and so I'm also going to be looking at the effects of that in terms of distortion. So uh, the distortion, so the test voltages that I used uh, were four different voltages range, ranging from 0 0.06 volt up to 4 volt and like I mentioned we're testing harmonic, intermodulation distortion and then the Gedley metric or GM. Okay so looking at the test data for harmonic um, within the Artist software it looks at the second and third and fourth harmonics and so for the 0 0.06 output voltage um, you can see here that at the 10 kilohertz we're at around 0.19 percent distortion for the third harmonic. We increase the output voltage to a quarter volt. Um, you can see that things uh, improve with the third harmonic at 0.016% for the 10 kilohertz region. Um, down into the mid-range, uh, we see higher order harmonics doing even better. At the one volt output, uh, we see that basically it's unchanged, um, so nothing really changed there for harmonic distortion. Um, now for the 4 volt output, which is 2 watts of output, assuming an 8 ohm load, uh, distortion is 0.035%. So now just looking at it here, um, we can see that it's predominantly, now my, my legend is a little bit hard to see there, but it's predominantly the second and third harmonic with the fourth harmonic being quite low. You can see it here at 0 0.0038, so quite low uh, higher order harmonics. So intermodulation distortion for the lowest test voltage we have 64 dB of dynamic range and then increasing to the quarter volt we have 75 dB of dynamic range. You can see here it's pretty flat in terms of the noise profile across the frequency spectrum. Increasing to the 1 volt you can see that the dynamic range is minus 77 dB. Um, through the, sorry, through the mid-range, and then it improves uh, to 81 dB in the upper treble. Um, I attempted to achieve the 4 volt output, however the DAC supplying the power amp did not have the required output voltage to see the full 4 volts at the amplifier output. And so um, here the maximum output voltage that I was able to achieve from the amplifier was 2.3 volts and so the DAC that I was using was the topping D10S and so I believe it has I think around 2 volt output uh, so the distortion at that 
2.3 volt output from the amplifier was 58 dB of dynamic range. Um, so I really wanted to see what was going to happen um, with the full 4 volt. So I swapped out the topping D10S for my Chord Mojo, which is basically a headphone amplifier that has a uh, pretty high output voltage capability. And so it was able to drive the amplifier to the 4 volt output. And so we see here that dynamic range is 38 dB. So I decided to look at the removable jumper uh, which defeats the negative feedback and so here you can see the one volt output from the amplifier with the jumper in place um, you can see here that we have um, just uh, counting it there I didn't actually write it in so just the one two three four five six seven eight so we have about uh, 76 dB of dynamic range with the feedback in place and then when we remove the jumper, we see the intermodulation distortion rise uh, by 10 dB. So um, clearly the jumper uh, is should be used if you're looking for the lowest distortion. So Gedley metric, um, I tested at the four different output voltages and then produced it as an overlay. So these these overlays are the different voltages. Um, so the the green line here is the lowest voltage. You can see here that it does get quite low uh, for the the 0 0.06 and quarter volt output. Uh, but then we do see it rise quite a bit at the 4 volt output. So if we want to compare that against other uh, amplifiers that I've tested to date, the Maxing Mingda um, almost reached, and just scroll down here to it, so it almost reached the uh, 0 0.002, um, but generally we see the Amp Camp Amp Mini uh, exceeding the performance of the uh, Mingda KT90 single-ended tube amp. Um, it also beat out the uh, Rogers Sound Lab uh, for the Gedley distortion. You can see here the red line. This is the performance of the Rogers Sound Lab integrated amplifier. Um, and so we're getting uh, pretty good performance there uh, at the lower power levels. So in conclusion, uh, the ACA Mini provides peak performance in the quarter to one volt output, uh, which equates to about a sixteenth of a watt. So in this region, we achieve around 75 dB uh, of IMD performance. This places the ACA Mini in the ultra low power uh, category, making the ACA Mini suitable uh, for power powering high sensitivity compression drivers or uh, very high sensitivity uh, loudspeakers. So to highlight this, um, I decided to connect the ACA Mini to the the Sierra CT440 bullet tweeter, uh, which has 110 dB sensitivity at one watt. So at a quarter volt output at the amplifier, the tweeter provided 91 dB of output at one meter. Um, in this configuration, the ACA Mini provides slightly less distortion than the tweeter itself. So to demonstrate this, I measured the GM distortion of both the amplifier and the tweeter output uh, as an overlay using the quarter volt output from the amplifier. So here's the overlay, and so the red is the distortion profile of the tweeter itself, so that's an acoustical measurement with my test microphone, and then the uh, amplifiers distortion at the amplifiers output. So we see the ACA uh, becoming a bottleneck for distortion uh, at the 5 kilohertz region where we see the two overlays converge uh, but otherwise the ACA has uh, lower distortion. So um, I detected no hiss or buzz from the tweeter so this is quite rare uh, since nearly all amplifiers that I test require a fixed resistor LPAD to bring the amplifier out of its noise floor. So uh, this wasn't the case with the ACA Mini. Subjective listening. So I tried the ACA Mini 
with some medium sensitivity speakers, which are 89 dB at one watt. And I found that the amplifier lacked the clarity that I've come to expect from other amplifiers, such as Hypex. Uh, so I then decided to see how it would fare connected to a high sensitivity tweeter. Uh, listening to the Care CT440 and also the Fostex T96A, the ACA Mini provided excellent overall sound quality for this specific use case. Um, so this this would be a, a use case for bi amping, where you're looking for a very uh, low noise amplifier for powering, or sorry, low noise, low output power, and also low gain uh, for powering high sensitivity, mid range, and treble drivers. So considering the cost of only 135 US dollars for the kit, um, I would recommend the ACA Mini if you're looking for an amplifier solution to power very high sensitivity drivers in a bi amp situation. So it provides a smooth sound character and very low noise floor when operating in the sub one watt range. Although I did not try this, the ACA Mini may work well with high sensitivity full range drivers, particularly uh, the eight inch full range drivers, which can have sensitivities exceeding 100 dB uh, in the treble region. Uh, so this concludes uh, my review of the ACA Mini. So take care and have a great day.